New Vauxhall Insignia Prototype Review We get to grips with a prototype version of the new Vauxhall Insignia, and the early signs are promising. Verdict We'll have to wait until we drive full production cars on UK roads before delivering our definitive verdict on the Insignia, but on this showing it should be giving the competition some sleepless nights ahead of launch. Not only is the newcomer as comfortable, spacious, and refined as the best in the class, it's potentially even better to drive. Time will tell whether Vauxhall has done enough to tread on the toes of premium rivals, but one thing is for sure family car drivers have never had it so good. Sales of traditional family cars are in free fall. With buyers' heads turned by fashionable crossovers, rugged subs, and premium badged compact saloons, the fate of these mainstream models looks bleak. Yet that hasn't stopped Vauxhall forging ahead with an all-new version of its Insignia hatchback. Promising to be bigger, better to drive, more upmarket and even more efficient, the newcomer aims to topple current class leaders such as the Skoda Superb, as well as tempting drivers out of more upmarket models such as the BMW 3 Series. That's an extremely ambitious target, but bosses are confident of success, and have even renamed the newcomer Insignia Grand Sport in an effort to differentiate it from the outgoing model. To find out whether this confidence is well placed, Auto Express grabbed the keys to a pair of development prototypes and put them to the test on the challenging roads around the brand's proving ground at Millbrook, Bedfordshire. Even with its heavy disguise, it's clear the latest Insignia is larger than the car it replaces. In fact, it's almost moved up a class size as it rivals cars such as the Audi A6 and BMW 5 Series when it comes to external dimensions. The tape measure shows that it's 55 mm longer and 11 mm wider than before. Crucially for occupants, a whopping 92 mm has been added to the wheelbase. Yet by lowering the insignia's overall height by 29 mm and shortening the overhangs, the designers have managed to disguise the increase in visual bulk. However, this reduction in height hasn't come at the expense of space, as the seating has been lowered by a similar amount. Not only does that result in more headroom, it places the driver lower in the car for a more involving driving experience. Look past the camouflage and its obvious Vauxhalls has taken many design cues from the Monza concept car that made its debut at the 2013 Frankfurt Motor Show. That means on the five-door hatchback we sampled you get the same low nose, sweeping roofline, and steeply raked tailgate. A practical sports tourer estate is due to join the lineup around six months after the hatch debuts, plus there's the possibility of rugged country tourer, but there will be no four-door saloon this time around. We sampled both the brand new turbocharged 1.5-liter petrol and the heavily revised 2.0-liter which was mated to the all-new four-wheel drive system and eight-speed automatic gearbox. Both cars were essentially engineering prototypes, but the chassis settings were production ready. When the car is launched next year, these units will be joined by tweaked versions of the existing 1.6-liter and 2.0-liter diesels. Lessons learned from the Astra mean that engineers have been able to make some healthy weight savings, with around 175 kilograms shaved from most models. That means the Insignia should be faster and far more agile than before. There's certainly no doubting the performance potential of the heavily revised 2.0-liter unit, which boasts a healthy 247 bhp and a thumping 400 nm of torque. In combination with the closely stacked ratios of the new 8-speed automatic gearbox it gives the Insignia a surprising turn of speed. The addition of a twin-scroll turbocharger means there's virtually no lag, and the Vauxhall pulls with real muscle from low revs. Better still, balancer shafts within the engine smooth out vibrations, allowing the engine to spin sweetly to the red line. There are no official performance figures for the car yet, but expect this version to accelerate from 0 to 62 miles per hour in well under 7 seconds. Refinement is strong, too. This is a pre-production car, but mechanical noise levels are impressively low. This feeling of calm is enhanced by the automatic transmission. There's the occasional jolt when pulling away, but once on the move it slurs ratios smoothly.
Pull on the steering wheel mounted paddles, however, and you're treated to crisp and prompt manual changes. The 1.5 liter car isn't quite as hushed, and it sounds a little strained when worked hard, but with 163 bhp and 250 nm it feels surprisingly brisk. Like the larger unit there's virtually no low rev lethargy, plus the new 6 speed manual allows you to make the most of the available performance. And while the lever suffers from a long throw, the action is pleasingly light and precise. Turn into a corner and you immediately feel the benefits of the car's crash diet. The insignia responds promptly to the naturally weighted and progressive steering, which allows you to place the car with pinpoint accuracy. And despite its size, the car feels almost as nimble as the smaller Astra. The 2.0 liter car benefited from the firm's flex ride adaptive dampers, which feature normal, tour and sport settings. In sport mode the suspension tenses up and delivers tighter body control, but the trade-off is a fidgety ride over smaller imperfections and some crashing over potholes. In fact, the insignia felt more composed when the dampers were left to their own devices in the normal setting. Another trick up the 2.0 liter car sleeve is its clever four-wheel drive system. It uses similar hardware to the Ford Focus R's, which means it gets that car's torque vectoring rear axle function. It's not as extreme as the Ford setup, but squeeze the throttle on the exit of a bend and you can feel power being sent to the outside rear wheel, reducing understeer and boosting agility. However, while the bigger engine model gets all the headlines and tech, it's actually the 1.5 liter car that delivers the sweeter ride and handling balance. The standard dampers do a good job of soaking up bumps, while body movements are well controlled. And with a lighter engine in the nose and no cumbersome four-wheel drive system it feels even lighter on its feet. In this guise it easily feels like it's got the measure of the Skoda Superb and that's high praise indeed. That's not the only area the insignia matches its Czech rival either. The increase in wheelbase means that there's bags of legroom for those in the back, while opening the large hatchback tailgate reveals a vast and well-shaped boot no figures have been released, but the boot should comfortably swallow more than 500 liters of luggage. Vauxhall is also promising the insignia's interior will match premium rivals for quality, kit, and ambience. The cabins of our cars were covered in fabric disguises, but what you could see hinted at a classy environment. For instance, the high-set dashboard is angled towards the driver, while a high TFT screen is used in place of a traditional speedometer. Vauxhall's latest IntelliLink touchscreen infotainment system also featured, while the brand's OnStar concierge setup is likely to be standard across the range. Other technical highlights include the most up-to-date LED matrix headlamps that feature 32 separate elements the setup used on the Astra only gets 16. Vauxhall hasn't finalized prices for the insignia yet, but bosses were keen to emphasize that they will be in line with mainstream rivals despite the car's push-up market. That could make the Vauxhall something of a bargain when the first cars hit UK showrooms in June 2017.